but the Arizona Coyotes and John Chaker are about to go their own separate ways. Hey, it's Brendan from It's Hockey Night, uh, and uh, yeah, I, I really wanted to post that question. It's been going through the rumor mill since Friday when ownership met with Taylor Hall without the GM being there. Um, and uh, yeah, so that's, uh, so it raised a few eyebrows for some people and and we'll break down, you know, everything in regards to that. Let's start with John Chaker took over this team. To start off with, there wasn't many deals to fix a lot of these issues. I have a feeling the mantra was to try rebuild from the draft and well, they really were without luck. They weren't ever the worst team in the league, however, they weren't very good for a lot of the times, um, and they never really won a draft lottery or moved up at all. If you want a team that was shafted a lot in the draft, it was these guys, because they could have really used one of those really good picks in the last few years and just never got it. It just never fell their way. That's why they weren't very good. But we'll run through his stats since he take, took over. Since taking over uh, as GM, he's 131 wins, 147 losses, and 38 overtime losses. No surprise there, we all know that they've been pretty bad for the last four seasons. We also know they haven't been able to score goals, and that's been their biggest issue, is that they haven't been an entertaining team, um, and they have not been able to score goals. In those last four seasons, they're third last for goal score. They have 20 more goals than the Red Wings, and 60 more goals than the Vegas Golden Knights. I'll let that sink in for a little bit, because the Vegas Golden Knights weren't playing one of those seasons. So that should show how dire things are for this team. The difference between them and the Tampa Bay Lightning, who are first for the last four seasons, is 300 goals. That, I mean, it's, that's, uh, that's unreal. Like, that's so many goals. They're also low on goals against, but I will give a mulligan. It just seems like they've always had injuries issues and, and goalie, and, you know, for a while there, they weren't really trying to be anything but a bottom three team to try win a lottery piece. So this is where I don't think he may not be being let go. I, I have a feeling his mantra this year was to start to stockpile offense, and he did. He got Phil Kessel, um, Taylor Hall, if they can convince him to stay, a few other pieces here and there. Soderberg would be another one if they can get him to stay, but I, I think that's more of a rental sort of situation. Um, but yeah, like they were able to get some really good pieces. He also drafted Clayton Keller, who had their best season in the last four years with uh, 65 points. Also the most goals in a season by a single player in the last four years with 23 in the 2007-2018 season. So it did look like they were gonna be able to get their way out of this, but as we know, he took a step back. Now Garland did quite well. Um, he was able to sort of, yeah, get very close and, and uh, yeah, get 22 goals, which is almost the second best, which is the second best season that they've had. So it's not just Chanka's fault, this team has always struggled to score. A matter of fact, that 65 point season that I was alluding to in the 2017-18 season for Clayton Keller was the second highest scoring season that any single player had wearing an Arizona Coyotes uniform in the last 10 years. Number one was Ray Whitney. So yeah, that was 2011-2012, so well, well done to, to old Ray Ray. I mean, I miss Ray Whitney. And they, in the last decade, the Arizona Coyotes have had one player get over 30 goals in a season, which is Verbata. Which, I mean, does that just... <laughs> you forget that he was even in the league, and yeah, he holds the record, like he was the only person to be able to do it. Matter of fact, to just go back even further, since the 05 lockout, they've had four, four players score 30 or more goals in a season. Two of them were Shane Doon, so, oh well, technically three plays, but they've had four separate, yeah, seasons where a player has got 30 goals or more in the last 16 seasons. That's not very good. So, to think that Chike is going to be able to come in and fix what the issue is with this team, and it always has been, that their inability to score goals or at least have a star is dumbfounded. They've never had that star player. Ever since I started watching hockey, they have never had a true bona fide star. They've never had that center that's just like that wow factor. They've never had anyone at any point in time have a skill set where they're in the top 25 in the league. They've just never had it. Now they're starting to build a very good defense and I think their goaltending is, is very underrated, but 
to be able to fix such a such a problematic issue within this franchise it is very difficult and it makes sense they they kind of lure free agents because obviously ownership changed all the time and it was always up in the air so no one wanted to go there so it was always this kind of a few players we draft and some spare parts with no chemistry off you go and so they always played this defensive game because that's what can win games sometimes Hell, they made it to a conference final once doing that, and that's fine. I mean, you know, they, they had an all right team then, but that's it. But, yeah, their best player in the last 15, 16 years is Ray Whitney. Like, without, bar none, is Ray Whitney. And to think from that 2005 era, like, no player, no player has got 80 or more points. No one. I'm pretty sure that they, they would be the only franchise that has not had that. I would have to take a look through all of them, but... A few moments later... Uh, no, there are three teams that, <laughs> that haven't got 80, uh, had an 80-point season by any player. And it was the St. Louis Blues, oddly enough, and the Vegas Golden Knights. So, uh, there you go. So, that <laughs> Vegas Golden Knights, you give them a look. I was very surprised about the Blues. But, uh, yeah, so that's... Wow, they really didn't have scoring for a while, eh? So, fast forward to now. To try and fix this team that is so flawed when it comes to scoring and... It's going to take more than this, and I think ownership's on board. So that gets to this meeting with Hall. There could be a magnitude of reasons for this to happen. It could be that the plan is for, for you know, say Hall wanted to meet with them and say, look, I want to see where this team's going. It seems that this next thing is not who's going to pay me the most. It's where am I going to be happiest? Where's the team progressing in the next five years? Can I get a cup ring? That seems to be his mantra. It could also be that the owner and Chakra, uh, Chakra uh, you know, playing good guy, bad guy. Could be all that. It could be just ownership taking him out and just trying to get a bit, bit more information about, you know, why is he waiting for the end of the season, or what would it take to get the deal done, or you know, what did you think of our first offer? Let's let's talk about this. Let's get this open. Um, there's a few reasons why he necessarily wouldn't be there. Um, and it, yeah, it could be that he just wanted FaceTime. It could be that he's on the out. It really could be, but I don't think it's the be all and end all for, him, for this. And I think they're making a mistake. I would give him one more year. I really would. I would give him one more year and see what he can weave out. Because he's been able to do some pretty good trades and some good deals along the way. And just needs a bit of luck. I, I really think, like Taylor Hall staying, I feel, and then being able to pick up a good center in the draft or something on those lines, uh, or getting a good... The only thing that I would say that's not great is that they're very up against the cap. Um, except when they get Hall, like, they're really pushing it. They've got a lot of deals that are like five and four million for players that are just... Meh. Mm. So... Um, that would probably be the only issue that I'd say that he's sort of attributed to the last few years, but you know, you can look to trade and, and, and move move contracts out. I, I think keeping would be the wise move, but what do you think down in the comments below? Do you think he's on the way out? Um, I, I just don't think so. I feel, I feel like it's a bit more signing games or the ownership being more hands-on than trying to get rid of him. I could 100% be wrong. I'm of course not an insider, this is just my opinion really on, on this. Um, but yeah, put in the comments down below what do you think or otherwise um, hit the like button and hit subscribe if you've lasted this long. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Have a great day. See you and bye.